Hello, my name is uh, Barry and I'm a PhD student in Vincent de Jacques' group at the Technion in Haifa. Today I will talk to you about the covariant decomposition of uh, nonlinear galaxy number counts and the monopole. And this talk is based on a paper um, that we wrote with uh, Dong Hui Jung and Fabian Schmidt, which should be on the archive by the time the conference starts. Right, so before beginning, I'll just uh, do a brief recap of uh, projection effects. So projection effects arise because the universe is not exactly an FLRW metric. It's uh, approximately so, and light rays are not exactly straight lines, only approximately so. The difference between uh, the actual position of a galaxy and the observed position of that galaxy arises because of cosmological uh, perturbations and because the light does because light does not move in straight lines and because of gravitational redshift and projection effects are the uh, term that is used to describe this uh, distinction and of course if one wants to compute the observed galaxy distribution was one has to take into account all of those relativistic corrections uh, and and use them to infer the observed galaxy distribution from the actual one. Now just uh, just to remark that the observed galaxy distribution is of course a gauge invariant quantity because it doesn't depend as an observable on the frame of reference or sorry on the coordinate system that uh, the observer uses. Right so here is a typical uh, example of a redshift survey, the observer is situated at the origin, the observer looks in a certain direction at the sky, counts how many galaxies there are in, the, uh, in a certain direction, in a certain redshift bin, and uh, divides the number of galaxies by the size of the bin to get an estimator for the observed galaxy number in this bin, so for the observed galaxy density, this can be done for the entire sky um, to deduce an inferred uh, position, an, an inferred position for galaxies, which we which is noted by x tilde, and uh, the observed galaxy distribution as a function of this inferred position. Right. So in general, quantities with tildes are related to observed or inferred quantities uh, by the observer. Right. So. Um, Moving on. So uh, delta, the galaxy over density, depends on the line of sight. It depends on observer terms, source terms, and uh, quantities that are integrals along the line of sight, such as gravitational redshift. It has been uh, computed with projection effects by uh, the authors I am citing here and others. And uh, here I'm going to display describe a way to calculate it um, differently. So here is a picture of a past light cone. On this picture you can see sources, galaxies, and null geodesics from galaxies to the observer. Um, this is a perturbed light cone because space time is perturbed FLRW and therefore uh, its sides are not straight lines because uh, light rays are not straight lines. Uh, this light cone is a function of the observer's proper age, tau naught, and of course at other values of tau naught we have different light cones. So to count how many galaxies there are in on this past light cone, because after all, all the galaxies that we observed are on our past light cone, um, we need to work in a coordinate system that's suited to this uh, light cone. So because it's a null um, it's best to work with a null tetrad. So we have uh, one vector in this tetrad, the tangent vector to the null uh, geodesic of the light from S to O. Right? Additionally, we have two directions inside the light cone sigma um, that I denote by M and M bar that uh, are perpendicular to K and, and refer to polarization. And we also have one, one further uh, direction L, which uh, which is perpendicular to, la, to the light cone, uh, you can see L and K here, and so K corresponds to incoming null geodesics and L corresponds to outgoing null geodesics. 
Right, so KL, M, and N bar form a null tetrad, null orthonormal tetrad, I should say. And you can take their dual one form, du, dv, dz, and dz bar, and then you can express the metric, the full metric, in a very, very neat and simple way, uh, given by this equation. Now, uh, this may be a bit abstract, so in Minkowski space-time uh, expressions for the null tetrad in terms of uh, spherical coordinates are given by these equations, where uh, you can take beta equals to 1. Right. And then uh, there's a relation between um, the spherical coordinates and the null tetrad elements. A very simple relation, really. For a galaxy S at position R theta, theta uh, phi and time t. And this expression is also true because the null tetrad uh, is a local tetrad. This expression is also true for a freely falling, falling local Lorentz frame uh, situated at S in uh, our cosmological perturbed spacetime. And this will be important later. Right, so to integrate uh, the number the number of galaxies over space-time, oh, sorry, over the past light cone, we need an expression for its volume form. Now, the beautiful thing is that the volume form of the past light cone is very simple, and it's given by this expression here, omega tau naught is the volume form, and it's uh, du wedge dz wedge dz bar up to a factor of i, it doesn't matter. Okay. So if, uh, if the galaxy current is J with uh, JA um, given by the galaxy density multiplied by the galaxy 4 velocity, then the number of galaxies, the galaxies in sigma is the integral of a sigma over the past light cone of the Hodge dual of J. Now J, as I've written it here, is a one form, and so the Hodge dual is a, is a three form, and so you integrate a three form of a three dimensional manifold. And this is good because we can express it as a multiple of the volume form. And the coefficient is just number galaxy density multiplied by the overlap of uh, K, the wave vector with the galaxy four velocity um, field evaluated at S, integrated. Then all of this is integrated over the past light cone. Good. So now we can proceed to uh, account for projection effects. So projection effects are just the difference between expressing omega tau naught in the space-time global coordinates, or the null tetrad, and the inferred coordinate system eta tilde and x tilde. Now, what is this coordinate system? This coordinate system is uh, inferred by the observer using the observed redshift z tilde and observed sky position n tilde and using FLRW background relations to convert z tilde and n tilde into coordinates eta uh, tilde and x tilde assuming that the universe, the inferred universe is FLRW. So you take z and n, you plug them into the uh, background relations and convert them to coordinates. And these, this is the definition of inferred, the inferred coordinates. So to get projection effects, to get all of them, all we need to do is to express omega tau naught in terms of the inferred coordinate system on the past light cone. Now, another advantage of the null tetrad is that, as we've seen, it has a very simple expression in the local freely falling frame uh, at S. So we are tempted to use uh, transformation directly from this local frame of reference, TL and XL, to the inferred uh, frame of coordinate system eta tilde and x tilde without going through the blo global, uh, global coordinates of uh, perturbed FLRW spacetime. And so all we're looking for really is a Jacobian because we are matching a top form with the top form. And the surprising thing is that this can actually be done using the cosmic rulers and cosmic clocks formalism of Schmidt and Jung, uh, which is described in these two papers and also others. So let me describe them. A cosmic clock is um, an observable that 
relates that uh, that uh, describes the difference between an observed redshift hypersurface, constant observed redshift hypersurface, and a constant proper time hypersurface. Now, in FLRW, the two are the same hypersurface. In a perturbed spacetime, they're not the same hypersurface. And so we take the background time to scale factor relation and compute the scale factor of a constant proper age hypersurface. We take the background redshift to scale factor relation. So A of Z is one over one plus Z. Compute the scale factor at the constant observed redshift hypersurface. Take the logarithm of, of the ratio, and this is uh, the cosmic log. So it's an observable because each of these are uh, gauge invariant quantities. Let me just mention that there could be uh, an alcock pachinski effect here as well uh, if we don't use the correct uh, background, but I'm going to ignore this in this talk. Right, so this is the cosmic clock. Now for the cosmic rulers, we can go back to the original figure. Uh, here you can see a ruler whose intrinsic sizes are not, but the observed size, because light moves in uh, curved on curved lines, the observed size is R tilde, which is different from R naught in general, right? And this uh, difference is uh, caused by projection effects. And if the ruler is infinitesimal and it's situated at S, then uh, the change, the difference between the observed size of the ruler and the intrinsic size of the ruler is parameterized um, in this in this way in this matrix uh, way um, and and it cos comprises uh, of both transverse and longitudinal um, deformations. The coefficients c, uh, b i, and a i j are called cosmic rulers, and they're also gauge invariant observable quantities because. This entire equation is uh, written in terms of uh, observable or oh, gauge invariant quantities. The metric, which is the matrix uh, that that is formed by C, B, I, and A, I, J. So, uh, so this this is a quadratic form. So the metric the matrix of this quadratic form is uh, called G, I, J tilde three, and this is the local metric, and all of its elements are gauge invariant quantities, all right, and they are the cosmic rulers. So let's see what happens to a volume now. Suppose we have a, a cube situated about uh, around this uh, source galaxy of volume V0, okay, so this is the R0, the ruler, so this is the intrinsic volume, right? This intrinsic volume changes by a Jacob, by a transformation um, of the cosmic ruler, so of the local metric gij tilde, into a different vol volume, v tilde, which is the observed volume, right? The difference between, so the, the ratio between the observed volume and the intrinsic volume is just the determinant of g tilde 3, right? Because uh, it's a, well, it's a coordinate transformation from the intrinsic size to the inferred size. So th they are related in this way. And so all we need to compute to get the projection effect is this determinant. So um, in moving from the actual uh, coordinate system to the inferred space time, so we use an, uh, an embedding map i, and then the pullback of the form from from the inferred spacetime into the actual spacetime is given by uh, the volume form of the inferred spacetime. So this is just simply the volume form of a light cone in FLRW, multiplied by a Jacobian, the determinant of G3, uh, which I've al already discussed, and a factor JT, which um, is related to the time ruler. I'll explain it later in the next slide. But uh, essentially, it's, uh, it, it comes from the fact that in, FLR, in the inferred spacetime, we slice light cones along constant observed redshift. And in the local uh, frame of reference of 
the sources we slice light cones according to line of sight so the ratio between them is precisely what what comes into uh, this uh, JT right so here is the determinant as a function of uh, the rulers simply take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix and now for the uh, time Jacobian so we take the volume the intrinsic volume of a ruler on a constant proper age tau s hypersurface divide by the volume of a ruler on a constant observed redshift hypersurface this ratio is the, uh, because the ruler is infinitesimal this ratio is the, the Jacobian JT and you can find an expression all right that's not uh, important uh, not very important what this expression is uh, combining all of these together we get a nice expression for the galaxy over density, the observed galaxy over density, as a function of cosmic rulers, cosmic clocks, and the over density in a constant observed redshift gauge, so delta observed redshift here. This expression is fully nonlinear and completely general. All you have to do to get a um, higher order a higher order expression for the observed galaxy over density is to evaluate the cosmic rulers and cosmic clocks to the desired order in perturbation theory. Um, and this should be simpler than evaluating delta G observed uh, to a higher order in perturbation theory directly. And this decomposition um, is into, is a decomposition into, into gauge invariant quantities, all of these quantities are gauge invariant and they also have very clear physical meanings each of them individually right so uh, let's focus on the linear level on the linear level so on the linear level uh, this equation reduces to something much simpler m is the trace of a ij and it's the magnification c is the longitudinal um, deformation of the ruler and t is the cosmic clock you can change from constant observed redshift uh, over density here in this gauge to constant proper time over density, and this plots out another factor of t, that's fine. All right, so uh, let's plot that. So I've plotted, uh, I've done a, an angular decomposition, and I've plotted the integrand of the um, angular power spectrum, right, uh, for various um, multipoles. And you can see that this integral does not diverge at uh, low values of k, and this is a consequence of the fact that c, m, t, and delta proper time, or delta OR, they're all uh, gauge invariant, and so they all have taken into account properly all the observer terms, and the monopole is finite. All right, so um, now I'm going, to, I'm going to very, very briefly say that um, we can convert, so this is a number, this delta is related to number density per unit um, volume, and we need to, com to uh, convert this to number density um, per unit observed redshift per solid angle. There are two choices depending on how uh, the background is defined, so I'm, because of lack of time I'm not going to uh, explain them, but uh, essentially one can use the global FLRW background, to get this relation, this is angular diameter distance, this is uh, the Friedman equation uh, coefficient, and this is the global Hubble constant at the observer, uh, or the observer can measure uh, the background, the Hubble constant uh, locally, and then the differences in observer terms. All right, so I'm going to skip this and summarize. Uh, I've constructed a null tetrad and used this null tetrad for, to get the composition of the galaxy over density that is fully nonlinear and uh, consists of uh, gauge invariant quantities and each one of them has a very clear physical meaning and I hope that this decomposition is going to be useful for nonlinear evaluation of the gauge of the galaxy over density um, in the future. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed my talk.